The Vermont Agency of Natural Resources Atlas YouTube series presents Base Map Control. Hello, everyone. This is Eric Engstrom with the Vermont Agency of Natural Resources GIFs. Uh, in this episode of the Natural Resources Atlas training videos, we're going to talk a little bit about base maps and the initial map when the atlas first loads. One of the first things you'll notice uh, in one of the recent updates is we did away with the Bing imagery and that was due to the precision and accuracy um, or the lack thereof with the Bing base map product. In some instances we found it was incorrect up to 7 10 meters which is unacceptable for um, some of A&R's business practices and editing that we do within some of these applications. So we decided to do away with the Bing base map in favor of Vermont's orthophotos and orthophoto program as well as Esri's world imagery which utilizes some of these um, images that um, the Vermont Center for Geographic Information sends to Esri for upload as part of the base map. Um, this is what you'll see when you first load up the application. Um, here's the state. You'll see it's a little pale because of the uh, ortho photos initially being loaded. And then um, it's draped over the Esri world imagery so that we see some imagery beyond um, the state's walls. Um, to start, in the lower left-hand corner, you'll see layers. Um, you can go, go ahead and click the layers to open up the layers list. Not much has changed here. Um, a and base map data. Um, we can expand that by clicking on the plus sign, and in here you'll find some of our more popular base map items, including roads, uh, lakes, streams, um, and of course the ever popular um, parcels data layer where available. Um, on an updated basis, we're getting parcel information from various towns and RPCs that send that information to the Vermont Center for Geographic Information. As soon as VCGI makes those edits, we do see those uh, reflected within the atlas. So for any questions regarding town parcel maps, uh, please refer to the Vermont Center for Geographic Information. Below, uh, I'm actually going to collapse or I'm going to yeah, collapse the ANR base map data. Um, to scroll down below, you'll see checked off, we have color imagery by year, which is um, popular. Um, if there's an interest in finding out imagery for a particular year, we have that available. This is the NAIP uh, imagery. Um, I'm going to zoom in here. I'll expand the color imagery by year. And then I can go ahead and toggle um, specific years of imagery, so 2016, um, 2003, and that should change the imagery for that particular year. There's 2009, 2003, etc. I'm going to close that. Below color imagery by year, we have Vermont Color Orthos. Um, this is the ortho photo program that I was talking about. Um, imagery orthos run on a uh, four or five year schedule. Um, you'll see different years represent different portions of the state. Um, we fly. Um, these different portions of the state on a year-by-year -year basis um, and then we return again that same location. Um, you'll also notice that throughout the years the resolution gets better so it's our hope that by using the Vermont Color Ortho program um, will allow us to get the best of both figuring out what year imagery is, is flown as well as um, increased um, ra um, image resolution over time. So this really is the best of um, for the state and which is one of the reasons we did away with the big base map. One of the lesser known um, locations or features on the map is um, in this lower left hand corner. This is the base map selector. Um, so currently we have the Esri World base map selected. Um, if you have interest in other derivatives of imagery um, from the ortho program, we also have black and white and color infrared imagery. So if I was interested in the color infrared imagery, I could then go ahead and select the color infrared orthos and you'll see that those are reflected in the map as well as the black and white orthos. 
um, which both have their own advantages and disadvantages. Um, one of the more requested items is this LiDAR hill shade, but it has caused a little bit of confusion. It was um, first listed within the base map features, but now it's in the um, base map button. And when it's first selected, you notice nothing really happened. And what the, the reasoning behind that is that the imagery is actually um, blocking the LiDAR from being shown. So if you find that you select the LiDAR base map, but it's not showing in the map, um, please ensure that the color orthos um, is unchecked. And that one reason is we can use the color imagery by year and adjust the transparency. And in some cases, we can make out some of that LiDAR hill shading with uh, keeping the imagery on top and somewhat transparent. Um, and that's just a value added piece, um, but certainly is optional for your purposes. Um, so that pretty much outlines the different base map um, items that we have in both our base map selector as well as in our table of contents within the layer list. Um, certainly you have uh, multiple options now, including color imagery by year, orthos, and certainly you can switch back to the Esri world ortho, or excuse me, world imagery product. Um, so that wraps up this episode. Um, please continue to subscribe to our channel for updates and future a &R Atlas training videos. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please email me. It's eric, E-R-I-K dot angstrom at vermont.gov. Um, don't hesitate to send in your suggestions for future Atlas training episodes. Thanks again.